My name is Emily Spears. I like playing football and I support Berlin. Emily, come on, sweetheart, school. Put your dress on. Emily Spears is getting ready for her first day at primary school. Em, dress. Are you excited? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, oh, oh, that's nice. And again. Emily was born with spina bifida. Over you go, When she was just a few hours old, she had an operation to close the lesion on her spine. Her parents, Rachel and Richard, didn't know how seriously the nerve damage would affect the movement of Emily's legs. Emily's walking normally, but the spina bifida has affected her bladder control. Six months ago, doctors wanted Emily to start using a catheter to avoid a buildup of urine damaging her kidneys. It's supposed to be inserted directly into her urethra. I don't want to terrify the child, but I don't want to think that it's an option not to do it. What does Teddy need to make him better? Catheters, yes. It's all good, Teddy. Emily has been doing okay. her best to avoid this painful process. Okay, now what about when you go to school? No. Emily can't come in and do it then, can she? It's a struggle to get her to use her catheter even once a day. My mind's kind of set, because it's like a battle with Emily, so we're, um, we're, we're battling at the minute. Emily's starting school still wearing nappies. Oh, it's choking down. How are you feeling, Em? Fine. Do you know what? Your mum's nervous. Emily. I'm nervous for you, yeah. Don't cry, Mum. Because I'm not going for ages. I know, darling. Promise I won't cry. OK? It's not a sad day. You know, like some people say, my baby garden, but I don't feel that at all. One, two, three, two, four, and one more. More than anything, I, I feel pride in her. Super well done. Seven. Put them in the middle. Nope. Shelby Pear is being entertained by her brothers and sister. She's severely mentally and physically disabled, but can respond to light and music. Shelby was born with a rare chromosome disorder and has chronic lung disease and a hole in her heart. Her oxygen levels need constant monitoring and she has regular fits that stop her breathing. Doctors have begun to question Shelby's quality of life. If we wanted Shelby to live at all costs, she should be either in hospital or she should be, you know, having a dedicated paramedic team but her mother, Vicky, is determined to do everything possible to keep her alive. Vicky and her new husband, Nick, have found out they're expecting a baby. They're on the way to the hospital for the 12-week scan. I have been feeling sick all morning to the point where I, would, I actually, you know, nearly was physically sick. And I think it's just why I'm winding myself up, worrying about it. I mean, Nick's been fine, really. He bought a bottle of wine. He's like, that's to celebrate after. And I'm like, do we, you know, should we really be getting this? This is Vicky's second pregnancy with Nick. The first ended in miscarriage. 
because I found out last time at 12 weeks that the baby had died, it's this initial, you know, step that um, once we got through, it's the not knowing whether the baby is alive or not. And, you know, people have said to me, like, when they've said, what sex do you want? It's like, oh, I'm not bothered. No, I suppose as long as it's healthy. Well, no, it doesn't matter about it being healthy. Alive is good. And I think if, you know, once they tell me, or if they tell me today that there's a heartbeat, that I'll be absolutely fine. I, I can enjoy the rest of the pregnancy. Vicky is the carrier of the defective gene, and there's a 50% chance the baby will have the same disorder as Shelby. But Vicky wanted her new husband to have a child that was genetically his own. The other option was to adopt, and the other option was to be childless. We didn't want to do the other two, so we've, um, we just carried on trying. As long as it's breathing, that's just a start. Back at home, Vicky and Nick have some good news to share with the rest of the family. Where is she? <laughs> that's the baby's head. That's his back, his lead on his belly, and that's his leg there. Shall, what shall we think? That's your little brother or sister. Or oh, sister, did you say? The baby has a heartbeat, ah. but Vicky's decided against any other antenatal tests. She won't know if the baby's healthy before it arrives. You can have tests and stuff, but... There's, I don't think there's any point, apart from the fact that, OK, we'd know and be, maybe be prepared. Um, termination isn't an option, so there's no reason really for us to find out. Vicky's second-born child, Charlie, had the same condition as Shelby and died when he was three months old. People might sort of think, well, you're quite selfish on the other children, but I think actually it's taught them a lot about life as well. I think they're a lot more sensitive. None of the doctors have said anything, actually, apart from congratulations, but I think that they realise there's no point even bringing it up with Vicky because she they've never listened to them before, so why would I start listening now? Good girl, well done, Shelby! I don't have to justify myself to people, and, it you know, it did take me a long time. I don't really care what people's opinions are. It's our life and we've got to live it, so... William Davis suffers from the genetic condition tuberous sclerosis, or TS. TS can be extremely mild, or it can lead to severe behaviour difficulties, including autism and attention deficit disorder. For the first four months of his life, William appeared to be perfectly healthy. Then he started to have epileptic fits and tests revealed lesions on his brain indicating TS. It's all right. William had brain surgery to remove part of the right frontal lobe, but his condition has continued to deteriorate. It's all right. it's okay. The fits have got worse, and he has to wear a helmet to protect his head when he falls. His parents, Paula and Nick, are struggling to control his behaviour. absolutely lovely or it can be absolutely horrible and there doesn't seem to be anything in between and you never know what it, which one you're going to get. He can wake up some mornings and give you a big kiss and, and, and get up and he can wake up the next morning and thump you around the head. Right, big huggy. <coughs> big huggy. Oh. And then we're going to go out. Ow. No. It's socially excluding him at the moment. People don't want him in their house unless he's in a wheelchair because he breaks things, he breaks everything and he hurts himself. He's in cookers, he's climbing out of first floor windows. No. 
we've got to try something that, that enables him to carry on a normalish life. But William's options are limited. Doctors have said more brain surgery won't help. So Paula and Nick are going to see if using a controversial drug treatment could improve their son's quality of life. Right then, are we ready? Mm. Yeah! We saw his um, community paediatrician and he's agreed that it would be worthwhile trying William on Ritalin um, to see whether it can control his um, attention problems more than anything and his impulsivity. To the doctor's so hand. And let's get the reins as well in case you make a dash for it. There we go. Good boy. Let's go. It's been about a year since Ritalin was first yeah. suggested for William. So it's not like we've made a hasty, you know, quick fix decision. No, William doesn't need to Doctors believe Ritalin works by balancing out levels of chemicals in the brain, reducing hyperactivity and impulsiveness. Hi, can I have William's Ritalin, please? I think there's been a lot of negative publicity about Ritalin and it's overused and it's overused by people who just can't control their children and generally the attitude towards it, I think, as a society is very much that, you know, there's still a great feeling that ADHD and attention deficit problems don't exist and it's just bad parenting. I think it is the, the whole questioning of your parenting ability that I found quite hard. There was a part of me that thought, no, I've just failed. I can't do, you know, I haven't brought him up right. After a lot of heart-rendering searching, we're going to definitely do it. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. Good boy, big mouth. William's starting on a low dose. Half a tablet twice a day. After a week, it will double. His parents could have to wait for up to a month to see if the Ritalin has the desired effect. You're a big old clever boy, aren't you, with your medicines? He's got to fit in a little bit with society, otherwise we're just going to get, as a family, more and more alienated, and we don't want that to happen. It's morning registration at Yerbury Primary School in North London. Nathan Christie is one of the new boys in the class. Nathan was born with Down syndrome, which has delayed his development. He has limited control over the muscles in his tongue, which has made it difficult for him to speak. Nathan was given speech therapy and taught to use a simplified form of sign language. helping him to be able to speak and, and just fit in. Nathan has started to make rapid progress. And his parents, Tracy and Richard, have decided to send their son to a mainstream primary school. They wanted Nathan to mix with children without disabilities. But they knew it would be a challenge. We were very nervous and just wondering what you know, what it was going to be like for him. Are you ready? It was a big thing, you know, how he treated at school and a lot of things coming to your mind, you know, and stuff, which is not like any other parent. Put your headphones on, otherwise you can't hear the words. Chip pushed Biff in the water. He grabbed the hose. <laughs> the first day he was all right, actually. I really was fine the first day, but the second day, I don't know, just just hit me. Like, when I went to collect him, he was on his own. And then I just, oh, I, I was thinking, you know, he's, this is, this is what's going to happen for him through school, you know, he's going to be, like, ignored and just left in the corner. It is difficult, it is difficult. And I think, especially with the child with, with, with special needs, that you do feel like you're leaving them on their own. I'd like you to colour in. Daddy's trousers. Owens. Do you want to? Would you like that? The school has provided Nathan with his own support teacher and wanted to prepare the other children for dealing with Nathan's disability. Firstly, they were asking us how they should um, approach him, how. And to be honest, I didn't even know. I was just like, well. Awesome. We've never even confronted it with Nathan ourselves to say, oh, you're different. Mm. It's just. 
But I mean, she, I, when they decided that if some of the children asked, they would mention Down syndrome, saying it just made him just be a bit slower to learn. Got ever so good at doing it nicely. Our people. Mm. Well done. Now. Obviously, all children can be bullied for something, but he's more. He's easier target in a yeah, sense. Yeah, he's an I easier target. In that isn't sense, it? it's it's a lot like that, but. That's more reason why I want to, I want him to go out there and exp and find out for himself, you know, and get in there and get involved with it. Because if you if you molly coddle him, if you, you try and put him in a closet, then he's not going to be able to deal with it. And I think it's very important to get him, let him go out there and, and confront it and deal with it. No one, what it is? It's a farm. A farm. As one of the oldest children in this series, Nathan celebrating his fifth birthday a few weeks after he started school. I think that's all the children. I think there's about 20 definites. Tracy's organised a party at a local sports centre and everyone in Nathan's class is invited. I just feel nervous because um, I don't really know any of the kids in his class or the parents. And it's just, I don't like organising parties actually, I hate it. This is Tracy and Richard's first chance to see for themselves how Nathan's getting on with the other children in his class. Honestly, I couldn't have asked for anything more, actually. It was just so, you know, every, everybody turning up and just getting on with it. It was, it was lovely. Yeah. I think five's a bit of a milestone. It's like he's gone off to school. And he, I mean, five just sounds like, I don't know. I can't Im imagine that he is actually five. But just to see all his friends there, his old friends from nursery, all our friends turning up with their children, and then to have all his um, his new class friends there, his school friends, was just brilliant. I think if he, if he wasn't the most popular boy um, before, he will be now. <laughs> Zoe Fru has come to London with her parents, Anne Marie and Michael. Let's go. Come on. Shyness, we can cope with this, can't we? They're meeting surgeons for the first time since Zoe started walking. The last time I saw her, we were struggling to stand up and take a few steps, weren't we? She's been walking since the first of October last year. Oh, that's fantastic. Well done. Even Dr. Hasn't seen her yet. I haven't seen her walking yet. No, it's something such, such a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Now she would be messing around at home. Yeah. <laughs> Zori was born with a condition called arthrogryposis, which has severely affected the joints in her arms and legs. She's had three major operations to straighten her feet and give her the chance to walk. She spent months in plaster casts and has gone through gruelling physio. The hard work's paid off and Zoe walked confidently but her condition requires constant monitoring and her mum lives with a permanent fear that Zoe will need more surgery. Not busted. Do you know, oh, come on then, bit of a hostess. I hate these hospital appointments because you never know what they're going to say. I kind of accepted that, that I have someone else in other people in my life that do make decisions for Zoe, decisions that I can't really make because I'm not educated in that way to make the decision. And if they say that's what's best, then I do tend to go with what they say. Okay, should we take a few steps? That's very good. She is a bit stiff on the neck. Okay, back you come. <laughs> We're going to do more. Going backwards. Mm. Walk backwards, that's brilliant. Okay, let's put you up then. 
Today, Mr. Hunt has some bad news for Anne Marie. He's worried about Zoe's left foot. We will have to do something about it at some point. You know, we'll just pretend that we won't do something more. Okay? She's going to need a major operation to loosen the tendons in her left ankle. I'm particularly pleased with the left foot is a worry. Uh, we'll have to see what happens. Um, I'm not having an operation ever again. Why don't you want to go? Because it hurts. But before Zoe has to worry about another operation, she's got something to look forward to. Anne Marie's taken Zoe and her sister to Menorca for their first holiday abroad. I'm on holiday! <laughs> if there wasn't going to be enough for operation, then it might not be for another one, maybe two years, depending on what Mr Hunt says, or it could be ASAP. You just don't know, it's not worth worrying her about it until you know for certain. Zoe's dad, Michael, has stayed behind in the UK with his other family. Anne Marie's begun to get used to life without him. I've had nearly three years of it. I'm a fighter. I don't, know, I don't know how long I can survive for, but I am a fighter. I'm too stubborn to let anything beat me. Oh, she stop walking so, so I can sleep to you. Sleep, sleep, sleep. So I don't really look back, I just keep looking forward. If you look back, you either depress yourself or you start to miss the good times, don't you? <laughs> I'm a funny girl and I can swim. How much do you love your old mum? Every six months, Emily goes to visit Dr. Lewis, who's been caring for her since she was a baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A picture for you. A picture for me? That's lovely. Let's see what's on it. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Emily's spina bifida has made her incontinent, and she has an undersized bladder. <laughs> At some point, she will need a major operation to make her bladder larger and prevent her kidneys being damaged. If she has the operation, she'll have a biggish, floppy bladder, um, half of which is made from bowel. Yeah. It's the only way Emily will stop wearing nappies, but it can't happen until she learns to catheterise successfully. <laughs> we will need to know that she will catheterise, yeah. because if you get a build-up of urine in that and she's not draining and she's refusing, then you've got the risk of that rupturing and making her quite ill. Yeah. The big question is, have you been catheterising? Yes. You did one this morning, didn't you? On and off. We're getting there. How often? Um, she's only doing, at the minute, once a day. Well, and it's quite, it's a bit of a push. Does it hurt you, Emily, when you have the catheter in? No. So why don't you like it being done? I do. You do like it being done. So Mummy can do it three times a day or four times a day. That'd be good. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> I, I, think, I do think, though, like, if she's told by you, she'll, she'll respond it's, it's more. It's really important. If you can do that, we'll be really, really pleased. Because then we can find a way of stopping you having to wear nappies. Yay. Yeah. That'd be good one. Okay. Too. And wear knickers. Yeah. You're supposed to look happy, not yeah. sad. I know. <laughs> it's all right, baby. Do you want to get rid of the nappies? Yeah. <laughs> Right. You know, I need to give him a smile. Goodness me. Give him a smile. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Hamish McLean was born in Kent, but is now enjoying an outdoor childhood in Auckland, New Zealand. 
Hamish was born with achondroplasia, a condition commonly known as dwarfism. His parents, Alistair and Claire, have been told his final height will be somewhere between four foot and four foot six inches, unless they opt for controversial surgery to make his legs longer. They might have to make this decision sooner than they'd originally hoped. I, in theory, I think lengthening when the children are younger is often easier for the whole family. The operation to lengthen Hamish's legs could make him up to 12 inches taller. But it's extremely painful and he could need a wheelchair for up to a year. You want to protect your children just like any mother does or any parent does. You want to protect your child, but um, your role as a parent is to prepare them to stand on their own. The family make a return trip to the UK to see Alistair's mum. <laughs> She's been missing her only grandson. It's just a shame he's going to the other side of the world again. Mm. It's dinner time! <laughs> <laughs> Before they go back to New Zealand, Alistair and Claire have promised Hamish a day out. But first, they have some explaining to do. Hello, I wonder if you can help me. We're here with my um, son, who's five and a half, but he's a dwarf, so, so he's got short legs. Now, he's about 90, 90 centimetres tall, but um, we, obviously, he's, he's normal size, other than his legs, so we're wondering if there's any way that we can organise together, because the people on the rides where they say he's too short when he's not actually too short because he's normal he's you know he's normal height right. you can go on the majority of the rides in the park yeah okay right thanks a lot bye good little fella can you tell me how old you are he's five but he's short <laughs> there you go which one should we go in red 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 one. Hamish's disability is becoming more obvious as he gets older. Ready? Alistair and Claire are struggling to work out if it's in his long-term interest to have the operation to make him taller. Ready to go? I think the kids have to be part of this decision. It's not, it's not our decision to make, really. Hamish, good driving! And I think also the kids with some of these disabilities are a lot more astute and aware than you know, adults make them out to be. If it's something he really wants to do, mm. we may do it because I'm sure he's going to have a lot of problems when he's, as he gets older and all that teenage and self-image stuff starts to happen. Well, if he really wants to do it, that's a different issue. Yeah. But, and how do you feel about it now? What's your opinion? Oh, I would be so anxious and worried about it, but it's premature to make that decision. <laughs> I won't make it now. Yeah. I just want to. No, you go don't there. have to make it. You just have to say what you what no, you feel about it. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. I won't. He's our only child, and and I worry about the hardship he's going to have to go through. He will one day come to us or to me and say, you know. Why did you do this? And you know, ask those awkward questions, and we have to be ready to face that, don't mm. we? Shelby's been given a place at a special needs school in Bristol. Today's the first day Vicky will leave her on her own. Never thought the day would come. I'm nervous. 
I don't think I really know. I was like, last week I was like, yeah, she's going on her own, that's all right, it'd be cool. But now I'm a bit like, hmm. <laughs> I don't really know what it's gonna be like. Literally, you know, 24 hour job, and it's not, there's nothing now. It's just. Hello, everyone. How are you? Hello. Going to school has had a marked effect on Shelby's development. Steady. Up. Yes, good girl. Shelby, standing up. Somebody I knew had said to me, well, why is she up. going to school? What's she going to benefit from that? It was like, she's handicapped, duh, stick her in a corner. You don't need to send her to school. Well, no, she deserves an education like the other children do. She deserves to join in anything in life like the other children do. Shelby paints his fancy. Good girl. She probably won't ever learn to read or write. And she has responded to things in, in school, which I never thought in a million years she'd be able to understand. You know, simple little things like um, doing her sounds in class. She's come out with sounds. And, and with the walking and the standing and stuff, well, if she'd been stu stuck in a wheelchair and we hadn't done anything with her, then she'd be nowhere near it. And, yeah, she would just rot in a corner. Shelby, stop. Oh. When we did that stopping, the first day we did it, she understood it. She took on board. After several days, she knew what we meant. And, you know, I stopped her arms, but her, her whole body stopped. And that, that was amazing, because usually that could take weeks or months to perhaps work on that, but she got it the first time. Try and sit her up. Yeah. Shelby, Shelby, listen. Shelby will soon have a new brother or sister. There's a 50% chance they will have the same chromosome disorder that she has. That was good. Before she got pregnant, Vicky was offered a form of IVF to prevent her having another disabled child. But she decided against any medical intervention. I don't feel that I have the rights to play God and say, well, I don't want that one, it don't work properly. Well, I'll have that one, it's perfect. And you know, that that's down to nature. There's nothing to do. I don't feel I've got that right to decide which one of my children lives or dies. Shelby. <laughs> Vicky won't find out if the new baby's healthy until it's Shelby. born. Ready, steady. <laughs> you know that sometimes you have to go and bargain. Eh? Well, they think maybe they should measure you for a wheelchair. I want to walk. Yeah, you can walk. But if you're on, like, long school trips, or if we're out shopping. A couple of weeks after their holiday, and Zoe's going to yet another clinical assessment. It's one her mum had pushed to the back of her mind. I want you to have a wheelchair. No, mummy doesn't want you to have a wheelchair either, but it's for the best, really, isn't it? Because if you get tired, soon you're going to be too big to go in a pushchair, aren't you? She's getting too big for a buggy. She's getting funny looks because she's in a buggy. And um, so it was decided that we go for a wheelchair assessment. And um, I come back off holiday to find the appointment, so I wasn't very happy. It's just I don't think I wanted to admit that it'd come to the point where I was going to go and have an assessment to order Zoe a wheelchair. It just didn't seem right. Okay, I'm going to put my tape measure here. I'm just going to see how wide you are. Okay, so nine inches width and ten inches depth. 
That's her eight inches. Do you know what you have in mind? What no. you hope we might issue? Nothing. I was just like... I'm in denial. <laughs> hardly get a word out of me because if I'd opened my mouth it just would have come out in a sob so I was just answering the littlest I could. You say that it's a little bit difficult to adjust to this and I really do understand this because this is something that people often share with us. People more and more accepting wheelchairs as part of life aren't they? Everywhere you go you see wheelchairs and also the wheelchairs for children are quite nice looking, nice colours and things like that. When we were there, they tried her in a wheelchair with the big wheels at the back. So if you have a little chair, we've got to decide what you are having. It's very emotional to watch. Zoe's new wheelchair is being made specially and will be ready in three months' time. The lady said to me, oh, um, what would you like? And I said, oh, don't ask me, you might as well ask Zoe. And Zoe chose the one with the big wheels and she chose... Um, to have the frame in a metallic purpley colour. Well, no, good girl. Oh, no. like you, I'm afraid you're the nearest. Me and Zoe had worked so hard for her not to be in a wheelchair. It still feels um, like a backward step, like a kick in the teeth. It's like, it kind of destroys you a bit, the fact that in two or three months, Zoe's going to have a wheelchair, whether I like it or not. So there's a few tears. It's a year since Emily was given a catheter to use. Her spina bifida has affected her bladder control and she's at risk of damaging her kidneys. Do you want to do your catheter now? No. You do? No. Yeah, you do. It's been a battle of wills. Emily. Come on. Are you going to come and do it with me? But there's been a breakthrough. Are we ready? What do we need? Flippy floppy frog legs. Here we go. She just woke up one morning, didn't she? said, uh, I want to do a catheter. And that was it. From being completely against it, yeah. absolutely terrified, she just said, I want to do it, and did it, no problem, and that was it. Big wheeze. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Hey, no, not that big. You're firing it. <laughs> <laughs> Everly, you're weed on my hand, you Rudy. In a few years' time, Emily will need a major operation to make her bladder larger. She'll be incontinent until she has her operation done. Um, she'll have to wear nappies and pull-ups and do her catheters. Her bladder's really tight and they don't think it holds enough urine to uh, keep her long enough between having to use a catheter. They take a part of the bowel and wrap it around the bladder just to make it bigger. Pretty major. But I have to go to hospital, which is boring. Do you want to go? Do you want to go back to the hospital? No. I don't like it. Why? Because I don't. <laughs> we absolutely dread her having to go in, don't we? Yeah. I think that's why we don't push for the operation. Because yeah, we don't want to take it. <laughs> it's not her, it's us <laughs> two. Now, I'm not having any more operations. For now, Emily's got other things on her mind and big ambitions for the future. She wants to play for Burnley and England. Oh, yeah, in England. I'm Manchester New United. She wants to go and work with her dad. Civil engineering. When do you want to do that? When I'm older. Because my dad is a civil engineer. She don't want to be a nurse, funnily <laughs> enough. <laughs> no. I don't want to work with you, Mummy. Yeah.
pot, William. We're running out of pots. Can you help? Should we get one of your pots? Can you choose mommy a bowl? <laughs> William's been taking Ritalin for three months. His parents, Paula and Nick, noticed an immediate change in his behaviour. The Ritalin has helped hugely with William. He's just such such a happier child, I think. He's happier for it because he has a level of concentration. I wouldn't say concentration is his strong point. You know, we still struggled to get him to do anything for more than a couple of minutes, but it was a couple of seconds before. Therefore, it's all progress for him. And he's just more content in general. Mm. It's almost as if it's given him the ability to be able to learn things a bit more because it has slowed him down a little bit and made him... It's given him the opportunity to be able to stop and think about things. William, where does the towel go? <laughs> well done, William. William! We would like to give him feel that he can carry on being part of society. At least this gives him the chance. You know, he's our little boy and we've just got to give him every chance we can to, to do as many normal things as possible. Shelby has a new baby brother. Callan arrived two weeks late after a difficult labour. No, come on. Because he was the first child after Shelby, it was just all so emotional. Yeah. All of a sudden, it was this big panic. And the midwife went, oh, it looks normal to me. And it's like, you don't know what you're looking for, shut up. But I was looking for, looking for things, weren't I? Like, yeah. oh, his, his nipples are too wide apart, and, and just things that weren't even there, I think, but just sort of, yeah, just sort of panicked. There was a 50-50 chance that Callum would have partial trisomy 9p, the same genetic disorder as Shelby. He had a high chance but of being as ill as Shelby's, but he has been absolutely fine. He doesn't seem to have the trisomy. Um, luckily, when we had him, the doctor that was just discharging us knew Shelby very well, so she knew what she was looking for, which is quite reassuring, wasn't it? Yeah. Reassuring, really. Um, she just said no dysmorphic features and discharged him, said he, he looks fine. Now that Callum's been given the all clear, Vicky has four healthy children. But like her, they could all pass on trisomy to their own sons and daughters. The children have to be tested when they're older to see if they're carriers. So obviously, yeah, they can carry on. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as they get a bit older and start having relationships and stuff, I'll explain to them and say, you know, it's probably worth getting tested and stuff. How long do we have off for Christmas holidays? A couple of people have said, even the midwife, if you can have any more, and I just say, never say never. <laughs> Good girl. I might love you, don't fit and keep breathing. <laughs> Channel 4 have been filming these families since their children were born five years ago sharing some of the most intimate and important moments of their lives. For the first time, they've come together to look back on their shared experiences. My name is Aviva Ray Frey, and this is my world. Before, the kind of disability ruled our lives. Now, I mean, our lives kind of control the disability. No. It's a very tight little world, and you almost feel that you get excluded from the other world at times. It's not a bad world. When you look at the good bits and pieces that he's done, there's a hell of a lot of achievement there. 
Some people just look and think, how can you have any joy out of heartache? How can you have any joy out of a handicapped child? But you do. It'll always be sad. It'll always be something that you wish hadn't happened. It's an absolute heart-rendering sorrow, and then it just makes their life harder. We keep our sorrow very private. When she was first born, just when... Everything was day by day, wasn't Yeah. It? And now, look, like, I'm looking years and years ahead. People who meet him do love him. He makes you smile. Makes you smile. He's achieved so much in five years. All we've ever wanted for him is to just fulfil his potential and, you know, lead a, a happy, fulfilled life. As they enter the next stage of their childhoods, all six of these children have already exceeded their parents' expectations. Some will continue to make progress, while for others, the most difficult years are still to come.